Step back in time, my friends, to fight for your life. For Cain rises again. You've met the challenges of Soul Reaver and Blood Omen. Now you will face even bigger challenges in Blood Omen 2. Blood Omen 2 is kind of Cain rediscovering himself in many ways, where Cain is kind of introduced to a rude awakening early on in the game and kind of has to ascend to power once again. Cain has been resurrected by the few remaining vampires that are alive in Nazgoth, and uh, they need him to infiltrate the Seraphim, try to figure out who the Seraphim Lord is, what is this new magic he's using to kill all the vampires, and try to overthrow him and regain his conquest of uh, Nazgoth. In a world of darkness, it's hard to tell who is on the side of the just and who is a force for evil. Such is the case with Cain. One of the great things about the Legacy of Cain universe is it's not so clear cut who's the good guys, who's the bad guys. There are characters who you may paint as the bad guy and all of a sudden you then realize that this guy is actually doing something which is of benefit to somebody else. Cain himself is very self-centered. Everything he does is about what's best for Cain at that time, regardless of whether it's seen as a good thing by the world or an evil thing by those around him. Cain himself is not necessarily a good guy trying to defend the common man. Cain has this very, very clear set of goals of taking over Nazgoth and turning the world to his will. One day my people would know me again for their lord, but the vampires who were traitors to their kind would know me first of all. You will enter this world in a weakened state, and you will have to use all your cunning to grow strong once again. Cain actually begins the game stripped of most of his former powers. He retains the ability, or some aspect of the ability, to hide himself in mist. Therefore, he's out of the range of most human senses. Later on, you'll also get the charm ability, where you target another character in the game, and then when you activate it, you actually get inside their head, and the camera moves behind them, and now you control that person. And Cain himself will have to actually defeat bosses who are powerful in that particular dark gift. But your dark gifts alone will not be enough to ensure your success. You must also learn to arm yourself. When Cain sees a, a thief or a thug or a knight uh, with a weapon that he wants, he can take that weapon from him, now he's got it. There's a large variety of weapons that Cain can pick up. He can pick up a dagger, or he can pick up a sword, or axes, and you know he'll exchange them for other weapons as he needs them. We decided to implement a feature whereby the weapons could be broken because we didn't want to focus on players being able to, for instance, button mash so that they could get off a whole series of moves without being punished, and that the combat system will actually reward people who skillfully decide when was the right time to defend or attack. It also helps us display just how powerful Kane's strikes in the world are, that you can shatter a weapon upon an enemy. You may believe yourself an expert in combat. How wrong you will be. This is a different world that you must master. The combat system for Blood Omen 2 is very, very different from Blood Omen 1. We, uh, we really wanted to go with something that showed off Kane's strength as a vampire. So what we let Kane do is when we get into a one-on-one -on -one combat with a character, Kane can circle around them. You have to time your blocks to characters' attacks. The swords will actually meet up as they're supposed to, so it's really, really cool. But to show off sort of Kane's uh, strength and power, we also let Kane grab other characters. If he can get inside their attacks, he can actually grab them by the neck, lift them up. He's got a weapon. He can do really mean things to them and toss them away. One thing we've tried to retain for the player is uh, a maximum amount of actions they can perform with the simplest amount of button presses. And so whenever an enemy is attacking Kane, all they need to do is to press the defense or the block button. And we'll actually arrange so that it's perfectly choreographed that Kane will actually intercept the weapon as it's about to land on him. And so it's actually something whereby the player's getting a variety of spectacular style moves, but with the minimum amount of uh, actual control confusion. Then Kane can also dodge to the side uh, around the person to try to get away from the attack. Now, some of the attacks your opponents have are unblockable, 
and they're, they have a very special graphic to, to sort of communicate to the player that you can't block this attack, you have to just get out of the way. Generally only the, the larger, stronger enemies have those types of attacks. It is a mysterious set of forces that controls your fate. You would be wise to learn about them carefully and harness their power. Glyph technology is something that's very mysterious to the world at the beginning of the game. It's kind of similar to electricity in some ways that people know it's there, but they don't always know what it's about, how it actually works. You flip switches, you, and the glyph energy travels across a, a glyph line, powers up a piece of machinery, and it does something that's that cool. It opens a door, uh, it you know, crushes stone, it does whatever. The Seraph and I have been employing it for things such as ward gates, and you can imagine them as metal detectors for vampires, so the humans can pass straight through them. But any time a vampire nears, it begins to glow, and eventually if the vampire tries to cross such a portal, they'll be repelled, and all the guards in the world around will know that that person was a vampire. In playing Cain, beware or you too can fall victim to his spell. I think vampires are something that has always been kind of on the edges of being involved. It's always mysterious, it's seductive. For some people it's erotic perhaps. I don't think it's anything that particularly comes in and out of fashion. It's just always have a presence. Kane's the most recognized bad guy in video games and he's really cool and people love playing him.